In this video, I want to address a really great question I got in a YouTube comment. So the question was, can you use plus or minus dimensions instead of basic dimensions with position tolerances? Now specifically, they asked if it could be used in the 1994 ASME Y14-5 standard. The short answer to the question is no. And the 2018, 2009, 1994, and 1982 standards, this was not allowed. But it was allowed in the ASME Y14-5-1973 standard and before. So I've got a copy. The 1973 standard looks like this, right? It's kind of a, a different color scheme than the newer versions. Now, I won't show you the pages of the book because it's copyrighted, obviously, but I'll explain how the system used to work. So in the 1973 standard, you could use what are known as implied datums. So you could have a position tolerance with basic dimensions and not call out any datums on the part. It was understood that the datums were the places where the dimensions come from, which makes sense with some parts. So I've got an example here. We've got a position tolerance and it's written funny because that's how they did it in the 1973 standard, okay? So we would assume in this part that this is a datum and this is a datum, straightforward enough. Where that system breaks down is if you have a part like this. We've got two diameters with a third diameter as a hole going through the part. Now we've identified this hole as being positioned with no datum references. So when you go to measure this part, you'll get a different result if you capture this diameter and then measure the hole, rather than if you capture this diameter and measure the hole. You can't capture both at the same time. So this can lead to uh, non-repeatability in measurements depending on how somebody decides to measure the part. So that's not going to work, and they discontinued that practice in the 1982 standard. 1982 standard, you have to use basic dimensions and datums, uh, explicit datums in the feature control frame. And that is the current practice. The three ingredients to a position tolerance are basic dimensions, datums, and then feature control frames. The question was mixing plus or minus dimensions with position. In the 1973 and before standard, there was this way where you could use plus or minus dimensions to locate the pattern, a pattern of features controlled by a position, and then use basic dimensions to control the features within the pattern. If this sounds familiar, it's essentially what composite positional tolerancing does. To make it more confusing, in the 1973 standard, they also had composite positional tolerancing. The reason they did this, in my estimation, is that they're, they were moving from plus or minus tolerancing that a lot of people would still use to GD&T, and they wanted to provide the maximum flexibility for companies that were transitioning. So they were allowing things that didn't make sense GD&T-wise, but made sense as far as getting companies to buy into the system. Now, in this example, we've got a basic dimension between the two features controlled by the position, but plus or minus dimensions between the pattern and the sides of the part. So essentially those two holes are going to be close uh, in relation to each other. So if there's some uh, mating part with two holes, you know it's going to mate up. But the outside of the part has a good bit of tolerance, right? So the holes can float relative to the outside of the part as long as they're uh, located to each other within this 30 thousandths. And you additionally get that round tolerance zone and the ability to use the MMC modifier, which you don't get if you just used plus or minus tolerances. Where this system really breaks down, in my estimation, is that you don't have datums. Now, you could say, okay, well, it's obvious you know, where you're measuring from, right? Well, when you go to actually inspect it, you've got to set up. So here's an example. I don't have a, a block with two holes, but bear with me. So you're going to set this part up to measure it. Okay, so we got our surface plate. We'll set the part down on that. Now we've got an angle plate. Okay, so we're going to measure the height of the part 
from our surface plate, right, with a, like a height gauge. And now we're going to flip the part to measure the height in the other direction. Okay? So we've got to decide whether we want to measure it like this, right, where this entire surface is flush with the surface plate, or push it up against the angle plate where only one, port, one portion of the part is touching the surface plate. So if we do it this way, we're going to get a reading here. If we do it this way, we'll get a reading there. Okay, now that's not a perfect explanation. I'll put a card up here on how to actually do it. You'd really uh, set, you'd really set the, the larger side of the part against the angle plate and the smaller against the surface plate, but I think this illustrates a concept pretty well. So what happens with a part like this is it matters how you set it up to measure it because you're usually going to be using a gauge pin with a height gauge to get your X and Y coordinates. So you're, gonna, you're not going to get as much repeatability with this setup as if you just set it up with datums A, B, and C. Okay, so let me just show you since we're here. If we wanted to modernize this drawing, So if we wanted to modernize this drawing, we'll change everything, every dimension to a basic dimension, establish explicit datums. We'll use the symbol for diameter in front of the tolerance instead of you know, uh, the abbreviation behind it. We'll add in the vertical bars in the future control frame, and then we'll identify the datums in the order of precedence. So datum A gets three points of contact, so say against an angle plate or the surface plate, datum B gets two points of contact and datum C gets one point of contact. So when we flip it over to measure uh, you know, with the height gauge, so we measure the X, we're going to flip it over to get the Y, we'll have repeatability with those measurements. Okay. So I hope I answered that question. And enough detail. Uh, we don't use plus or minus dimensions with position tolerances anymore, but you could possibly see it on a drawing, either uh, by the designer not being super familiar with the ASME standards or a company using the 1973 standard. So it's not out of the question. Uh, I've seen plenty of brand new drawings with, made to the 1982 standard. Companies hate to uh, update these, so it's possible somebody could be working to the 1973 standard now, and then you might just see this out there, you know, anyhow. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have questions, I'm glad to answer them. It really helps me if you send me an email with a, a snippet of the drawing you are you know, have a question about, and that, you know, I can give you a better answer in that way. So I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for more GD&T videos.